After using one of my mobile cold frames to sprout arugula salad in late winter, I decided to use it to sow broccoli rob a bit sooner in the season. I picked a garden spot that had been scabbed over by weeds during winter, since I didn't have enough mulch material to keep the soil covered. So I had to first clear the ground to sow the broccoli seeds directly. I usually like to start plants indoors, in cups, getting them ready to be transplanted outside when appropriate weather arrives, but this year I had been experimenting more and more with sowing directly in place to see if I could get the same results with less effort. One of the issues with growing directly outside is that you become hostage to the weather conditions. That usually means late cold snaps, threatening to kill off emerging seeds planted early. So in order to mitigate the weather extremes, I decided to experiment using a cold frame to jumpstart my growing season early, allowing me to plant vegetables out sooner and even start them directly from seed in early March and April. I planted broccoli seeds in a block of rows spaced very closely together. Broccoli rabe produces lots of leaves and small florets, so I consider it more like a cut and come again variety of lettuce in structure. Different from the regular broccoli that we only value the large flowering stem. I cover the ground with a thin layer of leaf litter as mulch to aid in the water retention capabilities of the first inch of soil. This would help the seeds sprout faster. In general, broccoli rabe produces much sooner than regular broccoli. That meant I had to think of a way to maximize broccoli production throughout the year. The key to get a continuous harvest with broccoli rabe is to plant it every week or two, a little bit. And that way you'll get a little bit of the mature plant each week later on in harvest. The seed I had planted has already Crowded, so it's time to move on and plant another batch this week. In the US, we are all very familiar with regular broccoli, the one that children deride as a tree on their plate. But broccoli rob is in many ways a different plant. It is a more bitter variety, so it may not be to everyone's liking, but I love it precisely because I think it has more flavor than regular broccoli, or what we call Chinese broccoli in Brazil. Growing up in Brazil, broccoli rabe was the standard variety there, so I was first acquainted with this type. My mother used to prepare it in a pressure cooker with garlic and tomatoes and salt. Until this day, I just love the taste that combination of ingredients make. Sure, there is bitterness, but in my opinion, it is one of the most flavorful greens out there. Unfortunately, it is not always available in grocery stores here. That is why growing my own makes sense. Having sown a second batch of seeds, much in the same way as my first one, I made sure to add a thin layer of leaf litter and covered everything with a cold frame for it to sprout faster. Broccoli usually is a very reliable fast sprouter, so using the cold frame is not really necessary. It just helps when the weather is still a bit too cold during the night. Sure enough, a few days later, the seeds were sprouting up like clockwork, and the first batch had already developed a second set of leaves. I decided to remove the cold frame and retire it for the season. All I had to do now was to add layers of leaf litter and grass clippings as mulch every other week to diminish the weed pressure and maintain soil humidity, as well as add organic matter and fertility to the ground. Another thing I had to do was to cover the young broccoli with one of my wire mesh cages because I knew that the groundhog in the neighborhood would love to feast on tender broccoli leaves, especially considering these are organically grown. This groundhog has distinguished taste. What can I say? Coming up in the next block, you will find out what happened to the broccoli patch. Would I be the one feasting on it after all? Right after this commercial. If you enjoy the videos and would like to support the channel, you can purchase an original painting or drawing in my Etsy shop, or become a patron in my Patreon. As the broccoli seedlings started to develop, the weather went into a brief dry spell which prompted me to water them with a hose. 
I try to water my plants as little as possible and many times I'm able to withhold artificial watering for the entire growing season by using mulch regularly. When we have more than a week of dry weather, especially during spring, I feel compelled to water by hand to keep the plant's development on schedule. Little did I know that soon the inverse would be the problem, too much rain. Despite the rain, it's time for me to harvest the broccoli rob. It's already flowering, but it's been raining for three days. And I've been putting it off and it's gonna rain for three more days. I think it's time if I don't harvest it now, it's just gonna go to waste. And if I cut it now, it's gonna actually make new flowers, produce new flowerets to produce. So let's get cracking. The broccoli started to pick up production as soon as the rain came in. Although it seemed that someone had left the faucet open and I couldn't even catch a break to harvest. While my other crops were still in their infancy, the broccoli was yielding its first harvest. This fast growing plant is great when you want to increase production in your garden fast. And unlike regular broccoli, where you must provide it with the ideal conditions to create a worthwhile head, broccoli rob is more forgiving especially for home gardeners. Part of the reason for that is that you usually eat the leaves of broccoli rabe, whereas that is not the standard practice for regular broccoli. Broccoli rabe has rather tender leaves, especially when young, and that makes all the difference. On her hands, she holds the seed to cast it over barren ground. She waits for rain, a storm will come to wash away With a bowl filled with this wonderful bitter treasure, I headed inside to enjoy it before the outside deluge threatened to take me with it. Once safe inside, I started brainstorming a recipe to use these very nutritious leaves. This broccoli rab is very tender, so it would be perfect to eat raw in salads. However, I want to make a recipe that's perfect to use for parties or as an appetizer. I mean, rather peculiar parties where people actually enjoy bitter flavors. My kind of party. The first step was to roughly chop the broccoli greens. Since these were still young and tender, their stems were not stringy, thus completely edible. When will we heal the troubles that we inherit? I then dropped the chopped greens in a skillet and then added a couple of smashed up and minced garlic cloves. I then seasoned everything with salt. The objective was to quickly wilt the greens only and not to cook them to death. I then got a molcajete and added a few tablespoons of capers as well as some pine nuts. Using the pestle I ground everything up into a paste. You can use a food processor if you want, but sometimes I just like to do things by hand. When will we heal the trouble? that we inherit when will we share the fruit of the land I then added the wilted broccoli greens and mashed everything into a pesto like chunky paste I wanted to make a dip to eat with tortillas so I added about a half a cup of tomato sauce and mixed everything together creating a chunky salsa How can we learn I finished with a drizzle of olive oil and it was ready to be eaten.
I've gotta say, it is a rather unexpected flavor. It is savory with slightly bitter overtones, which I happen to enjoy a lot. I will definitely make this again, with new varieties and ingredients, but for sure, this is a novel way of eating broccoli.